Alrighty guys, welcome to the video here today for Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. My name is Brock Page and I've been doing sports picks for free right here on YouTube since 2016. I also sell my personal sports bets on patreon.com slash Brock Page. And I'm currently 8-2 in my last 10 extra daily bets on that website. And of course, that's good for 80% during that time frame. Now, the extra daily bet is a package that I offer on my website. And if you end up signing up for that membership here today, you're going to get access to that package every single day all the way through the end of August. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. And guys, as an added bonus here, if you sign up for that extra daily bet here today, I'm going to throw in my daily best play for you absolutely free. And that's right, guys, my extra daily bet. It's only going to cost you just $2.99. And the link for that bet is in the description section below. Now, you may be wondering what the difference is between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my website. Well, what I do here on YouTube is I'll handicap the entire slate of games in any given sport, side in total. What I do on patreon.com slash Brock Page is I actually share with you which one of these free YouTube picks on my channel that I'm actually betting on personally. And with that, guys, let's go ahead and dive into some free content. We're going to take a look at the Phillies squaring off against the Reds, 1235 East. Philadelphia is the $1.75 favorite, totals 8.5. Ranger Suarez for the Fightins, Nick Lodolo for Cincinnati. Now, Lodolo's got an ERA close to 5, along with a 1.66 whip. And even if Nicky puts it together here today, the Reds as a team, they've really struggled lately. They lost 7 out of their last 8 ball games. And they averaged only 2.2 runs a game in those losses. They're also going up against Ranger Suarez for the Fightins, who's 8-5 and five on the year with an ERA in the threes. Now, the Phils have also gotten the W in seven out of their last ten. And they've had little issue uh, this year producing runs. These guys are averaging nearly five runs a game for the entire season. Alec Bohm's currently the club leader in batting average at the plate. When it comes to the total on this one, six out of these teams' last 10 head-to-head -head meetings got over the number. Matter of fact, the Phils averaged over five and a half runs a game during that span I just mentioned. I'm going to lean toward Philadelphia, minus one and a half, over eight and a hook. Next ball game: Cubs, Nats, 105 East. Chicago's minus 165 on the road, totals nine. Drew Smiley for Chicago, Corey Abbott for Washington. And out of just 16 and two-thirds innings of work, Abbott's got himself an 0-2 record for Washington and a 5.94 ERA. Meanwhile, as a team, the Nats dropped seven out of their last 10, and they're winning just 30% of their home games. Now they're taking on a Chicago club on the other side who's cashed in on the run line in six out of their last 10. Now these, they've also done a uh, one heck of a job putting up runs here lately. Out of these guys' last eight games, they average nearly five and a half runs per contest. Nico Horner's leading the club with a 306 batting average. Meanwhile, Patrick Wisdom's the team leader in homers and runs batted in. When it comes to the total six out of these teams' last 10 meetings did get over the line. So if you're into historical trends, certainly want to think about that one there. Now, the Cubbies also saw four out of their last five road games get over the total as well. Meanwhile, Washington went 7-3 to the over in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Cubs, minus 1.5, over 9. Next matchup, little AL Central action. I'm talking about the Royals squaring off against the Twins, 1.10 p.m. East. Minnesota's the $2 favorite, totals 8 runs. Tyler Molly for Minnesota. Daniel Lynch for Kansas City. Now, Lynch is just 4-7 and seven on the year with an ERA in the fours. Aside from losing four out of their last five, the Royals as a team, they're having a tough time hitting on the road. They're in the bottom 10 of the league in road hits. They're also facing Tyler Molly, who's got a 1.25 whip, along with 114 strikeouts. Now, the Twins have also been very good in their divisional home games. These guys are winning over 64% of their contests, against the division at Target Field. Luis Arias hits a league-best 336 at the plate. 
Meanwhile, Byron Buxton's in the top 10 in the majors with 28 home runs. And no real surprise here, guys. This Minnesota lineup is in the top 10 in the majors in OPS at the dish. Now, when it comes to the total, Minnesota went 60% to the over in their last 10. Meanwhile, Kansas City saw six out of their last 10 get over the total themselves. I'm going to lean toward Minnesota, minus one and a half, over eight. Next ball game, little AL East action. I'm talking about the Orioles taking on the Blue Jays, 3.07 p.m. East. Toronto's minus 175, total's nine. Jose Barrios for Toronto, Austin Voth for Baltimore. And out of 31-plus innings of work, Voss got himself 31 strikeouts. Uh, actually, I think uh, he's got 31 strikeouts, but uh, I actually think it's less innings than that. But anyway, uh, he's got uh, like around 31 strikeouts and a 2.84 ERA. Now, Baltimore's also in a two-game winning streak with both of those victories coming against Toronto. The Zoe's lineup actually finds themselves in the top 10 in road hits. Anthony Santander, he's currently leading the franchise in homers and runs batted in. Now they're taking on a sputtering Toronto club who lost eight out of their last 10. And they averaged just 2.9 runs a game during that time frame. Now the Blue Jays have also struggled against the AL East this year. They've won only 11 out of 24 divisional home games. When it comes to the total, Toronto's gone 16 and 8 to the over against the AL East at Rogers Center. Meanwhile, Baltimore went 7-3 to the over in their last 10 at any location. Give me Baltimore plus 1.5, keeping this one close, over 9. Next game, Mariners-Angels, 407 East. Seattle's the $2 favorite on the road, totals 8.5. George Kirby, possible for Seattle. Tuki Toussaint, maybe for Los Angeles. And if Tuki does take the mound, he's actually done a nice job in a short body of work this year. He's got a 270 ERA and a 1.13 whip. The righty's also averaging over a strikeout an inning. Now, the Angels, as a team, they've done a fairly nice job covering the run line here lately. They've cashed in in six out of their last 10 ball games. They've also averaged nearly five runs a game in those covers. Taylor, were, uh, Taylor Ward excuse me, is currently leading the team in batting average at the plate. Meanwhile, Shohei Otani, he's the club leader with 26 homers. 68 runs batted in. Now the Angels are facing a Seattle club here today who's actually had some issues this year getting on base. They're currently in the bottom 10 in the bigs right now in team batting average. They're also one of the uh, lower scoring teams in the American League. Now when it comes to the scoring in this one, oddly enough, Seattle did go 9-1 of the over in their last 10 ball games. Meanwhile, the Angels went 60% to the over in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward the LA Angels, plus one and a half, over eight and a hook. Next ball game I have for it, it is going to be Padres taking on the Marlins. That's going to be a 4:10 Eastern start time in South Florida. Now, San Diego's the $1.55 favorite on the road, total seven. Mike Clevenger for San Diego. Pablo Lopez for Miami. Now, Pobbs has 129 strikeouts on the year, along with a 1.14 whip. And that really shouldn't come as a uh, surprise here, as this entire Marlins pitching staff has been solid. They're actually in the top 10 in the league right now in strikeouts per nine. They also held San Diego to just three total runs in this series prior to games. And uh, speaking of the pods, they lost three out of their last four themselves. And they certainly struggled pitching on the road. These guys are currently in the bottom five in the league and road hits allowed. And even though starting pitcher Mike Clevenger uh, has shown some really good stuff this season, he does come into today's contest with an average four and four record. Now when it comes to the total five out of the pods, the last seven road games, did fall under the posted total. Meanwhile, Miami on the other side of things, they saw their last 10 straight all fall under the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Miami Marlins plus one and a half and the under seven. Next matchup I have for you, a little interleague play. I'm talking about the Red Sox squaring off against the Pirates, 705 Eastern first pitch. 
Boston is minus 150 on the road. Totals eight and a half. Rich Hill for the Bo Sox. Ronzi Contreras for Pittsburgh. And even though Ronzi's been decent, he does have a whip of 1.38. Meanwhile, as a team, the Pirates have had a tough time winning ball games here lately. They're just 2-8 and eight straight up in their last 10. And they easily have the worst hitting lineup in the National League. These guys are currently in the bottom three in the entire major leagues in strikeouts, bottom three in team batting average. Now, they're also facing a Boston club on the other side who did win four out of their last five. And they allowed just 2.2 runs a game during that span. Now, the Bo Sox are still doing a nice job getting uh, base runners as well. They're actually in the top 10 in team batting average. And they're led by Xander Bogarts, who's hitting 303 at the plate. Meanwhile, teammate Rafi Devers, he's the club leader in home runs and RBI. When it comes to the number, three out of Boston's last four road games got over the total. Meanwhile, Pittsburgh went 8-2 and two to the over in their last 10. I'm going to lean toward Boston, minus one and a half, over eight and a hook. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Rays, Yankees, 705 East. The New York Yankees are minus 140, totals eight runs. Domingo Herman for New York, Corey Kluber for Tampa Bay. Now, Klubes comes into today's ball game with 103 strikeouts and a 1.19 whip. Now, the Rays have also won their last four straight with two of those victories coming against New York. When it comes to hitting the baseball, Tampa Bay averaged just about five runs a game during their four-game winning streak. Now, Randy Rosarena, he leads the organization in homers and runs batted in. Meanwhile, Yandy Diaz has the highest batting average uh, in the lineup here today, the highest qualifying batting uh, average. Now, Tampa Bay is squaring off against a struggling Yankee club who lost eight out of their last ten. And believe it or not, they got shut out four times during that span. And I've said all year, this is the most dangerous lineup in baseball. So this is certainly an anomaly. Once again, uh, losers of eight out of their last ten shut out four times during that stretch. When it comes to catching on the, on the uh, run line, well, the Yanks failed to cover in nine out of those ten ball games I just mentioned. Now, uh, the Bombers are looking to turn things around here today with Domingo Herman on the mound, but he hasn't been great. Out of just 23-plus innings this year, herman has got an ERA in the fours, along with a 1.44 whip. When it comes to the total, New York went 80% to the under in their last 10 ball games. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay saw six out of their last seven away games fall under the total as well. I'm going to lean toward Tampa Bay, plus one and a half, under eight. Next game, Tigers, Guardians, 7, 10 p.m. East. Cleveland's the $2.20 favorite. Totals eight runs. Cal Quantrill for the Guardians. Daniel Norris for Detroit. Now, D. Norris got just 30 innings pitched under his belt this year. And they've been dreadful. He's 0-4 already with an ERA of nearly seven. The Tigers have also really struggled in divisional play. These guys got the W in just 10 out of 31 divisional road games. Now, they're taking on Cal Quantrill here today, who's 9-5 and five with an ERA in the threes. Now, the Guardian... <laughs> excuse me. Now, the Guardian... Don't normally sneeze during these videos. We do yawn occasionally, but uh, the rare sneeze. But anyway... Here we, here we go. Anyway, uh, Cal Quantrill, 9-5. and five, ERA in the threes. The Guardians have also been real good in their divisional games at home. They're 16-7 and seven straight up against the AL Central at Progressive Field. Jose Ramirez is the team leader in RBI with 96. He's actually third in the bigs in that category. Meanwhile, Andres Jimenez has the highest batting average in the lineup. When it comes to the total, Cleveland did go 8-2 and two to the under in their last 10 outings. Meanwhile, Detroit went 80% to the under in their last 10 themselves. I'm going to lean toward Cleveland, minus one and a half, under eight. Next ball game, little NL East action. I'm talking about Mets, Braves, 720 East. New York's the $1.55 favorite on the road, total seven and a half. Max Scherzer for New York, Jake Odorizzi for Atlanta. Now, the Red Hot Braves have won their last eight straight, and they scored 53 total runs during that span. 
Austin Riley's hit a uh, team best 30 home runs this year. He's actually fourth in the big leagues in that category. Meanwhile, Matt Olson's the club leader with 79 runs batted in. Meanwhile, as a team, there's really not many lineups out there that are more dangerous than Atlanta right now. They lead the National League in homers, and they're in the top three in runs per game. Top three in the league. Uh, and even though Max Scherzer has been dominant this year for New York, the Mets have struggled a bit here uh, at the plate this week. These guys average only 1.8 runs a game in their last five outings. When it comes to the total, seven out of New York's last 10 ball games did fall under the number. They also went 8-3 and three to the under in their last 11 Scherzer starts. I'm going to lean toward the Braves, plus one and a half, under seven and a hook. Next matchup I have for you, it is going to be Rockies Cardinals, 745 East. St. Louis is the $2 favorite at home, total seven and a half runs. Jordan Montgomery for St. Louis, Herman Marquez for Colorado. Now Marquez has a 6-9 record with an ERA in the fives. And in addition to losing their last three straight, the Colorado Rockies are arguably the worst road hitting team in the game. These guys are actually in the bottom three in the majors right now and runs per game away from home. They're taking on Jordan Montgomery here today, who's got a 369 ERA himself and a 1.10 whip. Meanwhile, as a team, the Cardinals won seven out of their last 10, and they've got a 644 win percentage at Bush Stadium. Paulie Goldschmidt, second in the majors in batting average and OPS. He's also in the top five in the bigs in home runs and RBI. <laughs> no real surprise here, guys. This Cardinal lineup is in the top five in the majors in runs per game. Now, total-wise, St. Louis went 60% to the over in their last 10 outings. Meanwhile, Colorado saw six out of their last 10 get over the total themselves. I'm going to lean towards St. Louis minus one and a half, over seven and a hook. Next ball game I have for you, it is going to be A's Rangers 805 East. Texas is minus 140, I'm sorry, Texas is minus 165, totals nine runs. Cole Reagans for Texas, Adam Aller for Oakland. Now Aller's just one and five on the year with an ERA in the sevens. The A's have also dropped nine out of their last 10. They have arguably the worst lineup of hitters in baseball. Oakland's dead last in team batting average, second to last in scoring. They're facing a Texas team who won three out of their last four themselves. And they average nearly five runs a game in those victories. The Rangers have also been a legit threat to hit the long ball. These guys currently find themselves in the top 10 in homers. And they're led by Corey Seager, who's hit 26 round trippers on the year. Of course, that's a team best. Meanwhile, Nate Lau, he's the club leader in batting average. He's hitting nearly 300 at the dish. When it comes to the scoring in this one, five out of Texas's last seven ball games at Globe Life Field got over the number. Meanwhile, Oakland on the other side of things, they've gone six and three to the over in their nine. Adam Aller starts this season. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Texas, minus one and a half, over nine. Next ball game, Astros, White Sox, 8, 10 p.m. East. Now, Houston's the $1.45 favorite on the road. Totals eight runs. Frommer Valdez for Houston. Michael Kopech for Chicago. Now, Kopech's just 4-8 and eight on the year, and he's actually walked over 50 batters. Despite their current win streak right now, the Chicago White Sox have been little threat hitting for power this year. These guys are currently in the Bottom five in the majors and home runs per game. They're also facing Frommer Valdez on the bump here today for the Astros on the other side of things, who uh, Valdez has been very tough to hit against. He's 11-4 with an ERA in the twos. Valdez also has 128 punch outs and a 1.13 whip. And even if Valdez fails here today, the Astros have been really uh, tough to pitch against. They're currently in the top five in home runs, and they nearly lead the league in fewest strikeouts at the plate. Jordan Alvarez, he's currently third in the majors in both home runs and OPS. Meanwhile, teammate Kyle Tucker, he, uh, he, his 77 RBI 
Uh, that leads the organization as well. When it comes to the total, Houston went 60% to the over in their last 10 outings. Meanwhile, the White Sox saw six out of their last 10 get over the total themselves. I'm going to lean toward Houston, minus one and a half, over eight. Next ball game, it is going to be Dodgers Brewers, 8 10 p.m. East. The LA Dodgers are minus 180, totals eight runs. Tony Gonsolin for Los Angeles, Eric Lauer for Milwaukee. Now, the Brewers have had issues collectively this season getting on base. They're in the bottom 10 in team batting average, and uh, they've also had problems making contact with the baseball. They actually strike out more times a game than most clubs in the National League. Now, they're facing Tony Gonsolin here today for Los Angeles, and I'll tell you what, he's been near perfect this season. The Gons, he's 14-1 with a 2.24 ERA and a .89 whip. And even if Tony struggles, this is easily the most dangerous lineup of hitters in baseball. The Dodgers currently lead, uh, they lead the bigs right now in scoring and OPS. Mookie Betts is ninth in the majors in home runs with 27 of them. Meanwhile, Freddie, Freed, uh, Freddie Freeman excuse me, is hitting a team best, 320 at the plate. It comes to the total in this one. The uh, Dodgers are 62% to the under when they bat first. Meanwhile, Milwaukee saw five out of their last seven at home fall under the total. I'm going to lean toward the LA Dodgers minus 180. Under eight runs. And with that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup for the video. It is going to be D-backs Giants, 945 Eastern first pitch. Now, San Francisco is the $2.10 favorite, total 7.5. Carlos Radon for San Francisco, Zach Davies for Arizona. And out of 92 innings pitched this year, Zach Davies has just two pitiful wins. The D-backs have also been terrible against the NL West on the road. Out of their 21 divisional road games, these guys got the W only five times. They're facing Carlos Radon here today, who's really tough to hit against. The lefties 11-6 with an ERA in the twos. He's also got a staggering 168 strikeouts on the season. When it comes to hitting the baseball, the Giants have scored their fair share of runs. They're in the top 10 in runs per contest, and their uh, RBI leader right now is Wilmer Flores. When it comes to the total, the Giants went 60% to the over in their last 10 outings. They also went 4-1 to the over in their last five Carlos Radon starts. Meanwhile, Arizona saw four out of their last five Zach Davies starts get over the line. I'm going to go ahead and lean towards San Francisco, minus one and a half, in the over seven and a half runs. And with that, guys, now it's time for our quick pick recap for Wednesday, August 17th, 2022. And as always, guys, our quick pick recap is powered to you by my website, at patreon.com slash Brock Page, where I'm eight and two of my last 10 extra daily bets on that website. Give me Philadelphia minus one and a half over eight and a half runs. Chicago Cubs minus one and a half over nine. Minnesota minus one and a half over eight. Baltimore plus one and a half over nine. LA Angels plus one and a half over eight and a hook. Miami plus one and a half under seven. Boston Red Sox minus one and a half over eight and a half runs. Tampa Bay plus one and a half under eight. Cleveland Guardians minus one and a half under eight runs. Atlanta Braves plus one and a half under seven and a hook. St. Louis minus one and a half over seven and a half runs. Texas minus one and a half over nine. Houston minus one and a half over eight. LA Dodgers minus 180 under eight runs. Before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one well, final reminder that if you want to see which one of these free picks on this video that I'm actually betting on personally, there's only one way to do that, and that's to sign up for a membership on my website at patreon.com slash Brock Page. I'm going to lean toward the Giants minus one and a half over seven and a hook. And with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on my website. Now, if you guys do end up getting a membership here today, just keep in mind you're going to get billed the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. 
And guys, if you want to get access to every single bet, every single package, every single day, you're going to want to sign up for my board member package. Uh, the board member package is an all-inclusive membership. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, happy Wednesday to you. Happy hump day to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash brockpage.